Welcome back. Y'all probably hate me. But you know, life be life, man, bro. Life be beating my ass. Fight back, nigga! Fight back, nigga! Fight back! Fight back. But this is the second part of my design with me. I'm sorry it took so long. I mean, honestly, I did y'all a favor. Because what took so long was me going through trial and error. But I can get shit right for y'all. If anything, you should be thanking me. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to... <laughs> Does it ever end? Like, I'll be showing you how to make your own patches from scratch for cheap at home. Let's get into it. So for supplies, you will need some skizzies, a pen. I would prefer like a like a water soluble pen or one of those disappearing ink markers, but that's all I had. An exacto knife, a manila folder, some regular paper, a ruler. Some heat and bond and then heat and bond ultra light. This is heat and bond ultra. And then whatever you want. Your patch to be made out of. Yeah. So first you want to measure out how long and wide you want your logo. For this I just used my phone. I zoomed in until I got the desired size. Then I measured out exactly where I wanted it on the shirt. I did like four inches from the middle of the shirt and six or seven inches from the neckline. So for the logo itself, once you've gotten it to the size that you want, you want to screenshot that and then trace over it with your paper. So you see, I basically traced my S here. I added an eighth of an inch, which if you don't know, it's about that much to each side of the S and I'm gonna outline it. Next, you just wanna cut everything out with the X-Acto knife. Ah, down. The pain, bro, you can't tell. But this year hurt. And recording it at the same time. Mm. All my letters. I'm a cutting board. Finish. So now you have what they call a mask, which are these, and the actual stencil. So this is after I kind of arranged them. I want them to lay on the shirt. So if you are doing something like bandana, I suggest doing a double layer. So here I just cut out a solid layer of it and then I cut out the actual paisley pattern. Slightly bigger than my, um, my patch itself. And then I'm just sewing them together, being sure that I pivot at each corner. Now you just want to gather your scissors, fusible interfacing, your stencil, and your pattern piece. You want to line up the pattern piece with the interfacing. Make sure it's either pretty even or a little bit bigger than it. Um, and then you just want to cut it out. Okay, now you want to take your two pieces, line them up evenly, and lay them pattern side down on your workspace. And now you want to fuse them together, being sure that the shiny side of the interfacing is touching the pattern piece. Now you want to trace the shape of your patch on the interfacing side of the pieces that you just fused together. If you're doing a shape, make sure you reverse it so it don't come out backward when you actually cut it out. Now sew around what you just traced with a straight stitch. Be sure you slightly pivot in like around your curves and at the 90 degree angles of the corners and always make sure that you backstitch.
Um, so if you do use a pen, be sure you flip it backwards or else your L's gonna come out like this. Don't make my mistakes. Now you just wanna cut out your patch, making sure you use the exacto knife for like hard corners and curves, and then the scissors for straight lines. We got a L. We got a P. Here you see me trimming my patch, but before I started that, I actually applied my no fray to all of the edges carefully so as not to further fray the fabric or like oversaturate it. But this is where you want to perfect it because this is the exact shape you'll have at the end after you satin stitch around it. If you don't have no fray, you can also just use fabric glue. So this is where we begin our satin stitch, but before you start this, I need you to iron your heat bond on high heat onto the back of your patch and then let it cool before you put it under the needle. Most importantly, do not remove the paper from the back of the heat bond after you iron it on right now. Um, we're going to use it to stabilize the patch. Okay, now start either an eighth of an inch from the edge of your patch or at literal the literal edge of your patch. If you want your stitch as wide as mine, uh, you're going to want to set your zigzag stitch length to 0.2 and then the width to 3.5. Uh, do your first couple of stitches manually with your hand wheel and then start sewing just to make sure the needle is landing like in the right spots. Also, please, please. Make sure you are pivoting around your curves very carefully. Like, I'm saying if you got to stop the whole sewing process just to get the, the curve right and the needle to hit in the right spot, please do that. Every so often you want to check and make sure the edge of the fabric is touching the needle. When you pivot into a new section or like a new line, um, you want to put the needle in but with the hand out and kind of start it off by hand. And then as you get to, I'd say like an eighth of the way down, then you can actually start sewing. So just always make sure the needle touching the side of the patch. I went over it with number five stitch, which is just a zigzag. Um, length 3.5, no, length 0 0.2 um, with 3.5, but I dumped <laughs> A second go around just to like fill in the gap um, and the only thing I changed was the length. I changed it to 0 0.4 instead of 0 0.2. So I put the heat bond underneath, but this is just me coming to tell you to definitely get the, um, tailway stabilizer because this is what I needed. Something to stabilize the fucking pad. Okay, so I absolutely struggle to sew all the letters together, but that's like basically what I was going for. Um, I kind of just set them into the place that I wanted to be, and then I took a photo, um, used the reference photo, tried to pin them 
to like how I'm going to be placed, but that ain't really work out. So I use these lock clips. It came out pretty fucking well. It took fucking forever, but we did good. Don't mind this glue. I, I swear it's glue. Anyway, um, this is the detail for me. I mean, I gotta cut the strings off, but like, I just really, I like the detail of banana print or paisley print, and I really like these colors. So, so this is generally how I want it to look. I hope the demonstration was clear enough for you. If not, there will be step-by-step -step instructions in the description down below. I'm on all my socials. If you want to follow me and the brand website so you can keep up with everything I'm doing and cop something when the collection finally drops. And if you made it this far, give me some suggestions down below in the comments of what I should name the brand or what I should name particular pieces. I got two more. or three more i'm trying to decide if i want to drop the last one in i'll be back next week for real this time for real this time no promises though <laughs> bye